We all love a good open world game, and here at Gaming Bolt, we take every opportunity we get to gush on and on about some of our favorite ones. But maintaining a consistent level of quality across a massive open world experience is not exactly an easy task, and there have been more than a few examples of games over the years that have failed to do just that. Here, we're going to talk about some of the worst open world games we've ever had the displeasure of playing. A quick note before we move forward. Please consider subscribing and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. And while you're at it, please click like if you enjoyed this video. It really helps us out. With that out of the way, let's begin. Dynasty Warriors 9 Dynasty Warriors as a series lives and dies by its large-scale, high-octane 1v1000 battles. And so in Dynasty Warriors 9, Koei Tecmo and Omega Force, in their infinite wisdom, decided to dilute that with an open-world setting. This is a prime example of a series chasing a popular trend without any regard for whether or not that trend will be suited to its strengths. Worse still, not only did Dynasty Warriors 9's open world detract from the game's other strengths, it just wasn't a very good open world to begin with. Metal Gear Survive Metal Gear Survive was, in no vague terms, a slap in the face for all longtime Metal Gear fans. The Phantom Pain had already proven to be a divisive experience, and was followed immediately afterward with the departure of Hideo Kojima. Konami, for some reason, thought it would be a good idea to follow up on that pile of controversy with a poorly designed, generic, mind-numbingly boring game about killing zombies and slapping the Metal Gear name onto it just for the sake of selling copies. Metal Gear Survive is a terrible Metal Gear game, but even when viewed on its own merits, or the lack thereof, it's just a very forgettable, very boring game. Superman Returns it's a shame that we haven't ever really had a good Superman game, and what makes that fact sting even more is that we've had quite a few atrocious ones. Perhaps one of the worst of the lot is Superman Returns. Movie tie-ins tend to be shoddily put together products, but Superman Returns falls short even of those standards. Somehow the game managed to perfect the science of boring players to death while playing as Superman. It played like crap, it looked even worse, and remains to this day one of the worst Superman games of all time, which is really saying something. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 Unlike Superman, Spidey definitely has had more than a few excellent video game adaptations even before his recent resurgence in the industry, which just makes The Amazing Spider-Man 2's failures even more inexcusable. It was just a hastily put together product that was evidently made only because of contractual obligations. Nothing about it worked. Not the story, not the combat, not the open world. The side missions were bland, the game was riddled with technical issues, and so much of it just felt like a blatant cut-paste job of its immediate predecessor, which itself wasn't exactly an award-winning game either. Thanks to Insomniac though, we know for a fact now that excellent Spider-Man games can and do exist so at least we can pretend like this one just never happened. Driver 3 You knew this one was coming, right? This is probably one of the biggest high-profile open-world flops to this day, and anyone who's been unlucky enough to play it will understand why. Driver 3 just checked all the boxes of everything a game of this kind could do wrong. Clunky controls, check. Horrible mission design? Check. A bland, boring open world? Check. A litany of other technical issues? Check. A ridiculously nonsensical story? Well, you get it. Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 CI Games' Sniper series has tried to reinvent itself more than a few times, and not always with the best results. The most disastrous experiment came with Sniper Ghost Warriors 3, that fell into the we must be an open world game because that's what sells right now trap that so many games have fallen into in recent years. And yeah, to no one's surprise, that didn't work. The open world was bland and dry, pulled focus away from the game's best aspects, and ended up introducing half-baked mechanics that were never properly fleshed out. Add to that a terrible story that felt like it was written by an algorithm, and what you have was the series' worst game in a long, long time. Raven's Cry Where do we even start with this one? Raven's Cry just failed as a game on every level possible. A terrible and terribly told story meant that there was nothing to latch onto in its world, but even the simple act of playing the game was plain torture, thanks to a barrage of technical issues and some of the clunkiest controls you'll ever find in a game. Huge chunks of the game's content was also missing. 
Many games are often accused of launching in an unfinished state, but Raven's Cry was literally actually unfinished. As if all of that wasn't enough, the game also had downright offensive writing and terrible voice acting that didn't help anything. You might never have even heard of Raven's Cry until now, and that's definitely a good thing, so stay far away from this one. Risen 3 Titan Lords There's a lot to be said for Risen 3 actually being a fairly engaging and rewarding role-playing game, a fact that does tend to get overlooked. But for all of its merits on those fronts, the world design in this game absolutely blows. There's no holding back. The open world in Risen 3 sucks. It's bad. There's really no getting around it. Coming at the peak of the era where every game was including an open world, whether or not it made sense or was designed to accommodate that design, it's just a lot of space with mind-numbing repetition. The world feels procedurally generated, as do the activities that populate it, and neither the rewards for exploration nor the act of exploring are rewarding. In the end, you spend the bulk of your time with the world trudging through it with no payoff other than getting to the parts the game is actually halfway decent at. Crackdown 3 Back before Crackdown 3 was released, Microsoft would often talk about how it wanted the franchise to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with other flagship Xbox properties like Halo and Gears of War. Yeah, that didn't age very well. And honestly, who couldn't have seen this coming? Crackdown 3 made some lofty promises before its launch, but it had an incredibly messy development cycle and was delayed more than a few times. When it finally came out, it was a boring, uninspired product with very little going for it, and felt, from a design perspective, like it was stuck in the early 2000s. Its multiplayer 2 fell spectacularly short of expectations. All in all, it may very well have killed the franchise. Fuel It doesn't matter how big an open world game's map is. If its core design and fundamental mechanics are bad, no amount of real estate is going to help with that. No game exemplifies that better than Fuel. Sure, it had a massive open world, one of the biggest we've ever seen in any game in fact, but none of that space was put to good use. Driving around the open world wasn't fun. The driving mechanics themselves were sloppy, races were poorly designed, and the AI was horribly inconsistent. Fuel would have been much better of a game if, instead of wasting all of their time and energy on creating that massive world, the developers had instead created fun gameplay. So, what are your thoughts on this? Go ahead and share them in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. We upload every day and would really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.